Hey Stampers, I'm Meg and you are here for a Wednesday edition of Maker Mornings with Meg. So today I have a card to share with you which um, we are going to go ahead and uh, do the whole Christmas in July thing. So if you've been thinking about doing your Christmas cards, um, I'm going to give you some ideas using some things that are already in the um, regular catalog. So they're available now. Um, these guys and specifically we're going to use poinsettia petals here um, which actually is a stamp set that I featured a lot um, gosh either last winter or the year before so if you're looking for more ideas there are tons on my um, website at lovenstamps.com in the blog section uh, so you can look back for those but the reason that I picked this one is because I wanted to do something Christmassy um, that makes the most of the tidings of Christmas designer series paper so this uh, stuff is included here on this fabulous um, July offer uh, which means that this is a great time to think about getting it so I'm going to give you a card that takes a lot of the I don't know mystery I guess out of um, the design process so a lot of times you know when people sit down to make cards they're like ah forget it um and i actually just talked to somebody yesterday who was saying she just likes to case things which is totally fine right you find a card design you um you know repeat it and you maybe change it up or make it pretty similar um and of course give credit to the designer then but um you know casing is a great way to sit down and make cards but sometimes it's fun to just branch out a little bit try something different but use a base layout that can be repeated and adjusted so i'm going to give you a base layout today i'm going to show you a sneak peek of a new ribbon that you're going to love um, from the holiday catalog and i'm going to show you a sneak peek of celebration two three celebration items that uses the same layout so it'll give you some good ideas and deborah yeah not late today it just took me a couple extra minutes to get my stuff ready for today so glad you're here and Teresa, trish sue carol um yeah we're all good to go you guys ready to get stamping um and really if you're not into christmas cards yet that's totally fine uh, this is a layout that you will find really useful and the card that I'm going to show you as a sneak peek is not Christmassy at all So hang in there All right, so I'm gonna flip you guys down this direction and get us oriented And then we are going to go ahead and get started. So, um, like I said, uh, we're using the tidings of Christmas paper and I'll give you sort of the quick cutting directions on this. Sometimes I find that if I if I see it or if I remember it, uh, or sorry, if I see it or if I do it, I remember it a little bit better than just sort of, um, you know, when it's glossed over. So I'm going to pull in my trimmer and get rid of some stuff there. And I'm going to show you. So this paper, um, we're going to make a horizontal card. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it four inches uh, and set this aside, which I can use for something else. And then this would actually give me two projects. So I'm gonna cut it in half. And now I have a three by four inch piece. Um, and a three by four card is a great way to use designer series paper. Um, it's a tag on my blog. If you go to Loven Stamps and check my blog, you can look up tons of three by four cards. I'll try and go back and add it to the video description um, as a link. But this one, I wanted to do something a little bit different because I really liked both sides of the paper. So um, I wanted to go in and use both of them. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, flip this and cut off one inch um, at the bottom, okay? And now when I use this paper, I can stick it together like this and have um, two different patterns kind of showing, which is gonna give me a split. And I talk about two thirds um, split or rule of thirds all the time. Um, so now we have this paper here that's going to layer so nicely um, and gives us a great example of that rule of thirds lay rule. Okay, so we're pretty set on this. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop it on. And I'm gonna pop this at the bottom. The mat that I'm sticking it on is um, three and a quarter by four and a quarter. Um, it's actually a teeny bit tinier if you are <laughs> like, no, it's not Meg. Um, but the easy route is three and a quarter by four and a quarter. So, all right. So we have our paper there. This is going to layer now on a piece of cherry cobbler cardstock and you get a really good idea of the very base 
um, layout of our card, okay? Kind of see how that works. It's a great layout. You can use all different designer series papers on it. Um, the pansy paper would be, there, where'd it go? Pansy paper, the tiger um, in the wild paper. There's no paper that wouldn't work with this. Uh, and <laughs> I just saw your comment, Deborah, not me. Uh, I'm glad you're not late. And really, I don't know, maybe I was just trying to help help us both by starting just a minute or two late today. So sometimes you get lucky, right? So I'm gonna pop some dimensionals on the back here and go ahead and stick this down. There we go. And so that gives us, like I said, a really great base to start with. So um, now uh, I am going to um, go ahead and bring in our poinsettias so we can do some coloring. We're gonna do a little Stampin' Blends. Um, tutorial and so forth. So leave a comment. Do you guys, how do you like to design? Do you like to start with a tutorial or start with a layout design? Do you just, you know, come up with everything randomly every time? Do you like to case? Um, how do you guys like to do this? So I know you are all stampers. So, uh, and I'm going to have to go get Pepper to come inside here in a second. So all right, we'll let that memento dry for a second and bring in my Stampin' Blends. Uh, pardon me. Come on inside, Good girl. All right, I think she wanted to go see something in the front yard now, so she'll go check that out. <laughs> All right, hi, Margie. Okay, so I have my um, stamp here. Now, when you're using Stampin' Blends, these are alcohol markers, so you want to stamp in a water-based ink like memento. Um, and then you know that you'll be able to color. Now, usually I start with a light color base. Um, Stampin' Blends come in pairs, a light and a dark. And so usually I color light first, add some dark highlighting, and then blend it with the light. But this is such a tight image, and these are really dark Stampin' Blends that I'm gonna give you a different protocol for this. So um, instead, I'm gonna start with my dark. And I am going to um, go ahead and shade the things that normally I would just go back and add highlights to. So definitions of those little veins. Um, I'm gonna use the color here lines, uh, as I like to call them. That is any place where there's this shading, um, this cross hatching on the stamped image itself. That's a place where the Stampin' Up! artists have said, hey, color here. <laughs> um, they've said that there's a shadow there, and so you're clearly going to want to um, give that a little extra depth um, of color to give it a little bit of extra shaping. So I'm gonna do this dark first. So this is a little different than I've shown you before. And you can see that a lot of that um, darkness is right there in the center where the flower um, would have some sort of natural shadowing. Now I'm gonna go back and I'm going to color, whoops, um, the dark leaves. Oh, and I just realized that I'm coloring the one that I didn't pre-die cut. So I guess I'm gonna have to die cut it for you. That's okay, no problem. All right, and I'm not gonna worry too much about coloring outside the lines. Um, I'm gonna try not to, but it's not the end of the world because it, um, will be die cut. And I'll tell you what helps me to not color outside the lines, and that is to treat this like it's a paintbrush and always draw it towards me. So when I draw towards me, I have much better control of what I'm doing. So as I color my flower, I'm just gonna keep turning it and then I'm always drawing towards me. Now another tip um, to remember with the Stampin' Blends is I'm coloring each of these petals separately. Um, to just give them a little bit more extra definition. Oh, I'm not coloring towards me. I had to turn this. Um, a little extra definition. And now you can kind of see how that first um, step of, of dark um, color, this is cherry cobbler, sort of added a little bit of extra depth there. So now I'm gonna go back and I'm going to add just a little more, um, especially where our petals overlap each other. So where there's um, a petal, this one is on top of this one. Um, I'm gonna make sure that I give it a little bit more depth of color um, to kind of indicate that shadow. And I'm gonna try not to do it on the ones that are sort of in the more foreground so that they have a little bit more, a um, little bit lighter presence there. Okay, and then lastly, I'm gonna go back one more time with my light and I'm going to just um, color sort of at the edges of what I just did to just blend that um, 
as we go, okay? So, I know um, Stampin' Blends are so pretty, and I think that sometimes they're a little bit intimidating. They're really not that difficult. Just kind of run through the steps, and, and you'll find that you like them. So, let's see. <laughs> Trish says she cases my cards. Hey, that's what they're here for, Trish. I love it. And Deborah says she likes starting with layouts. Yeah, so um, if you guys missed the... Um, layout that I did the other day with a three DSP strip. This is like my favorite card layout right now. Um, so it's the Monday video and there are some sneak peeks in there too. All right, so um, today we're doing three by four cards with just a little twist with the split in it. So I'm gonna bring this back here with my die, there we go, and line up my poinsettia. And let's see here, I want my, there it is, <laughs> uh, I need my, mini uh, die cut machine, my mini stamp and cut and emboss, and pop this on here, um, grab my plate. So when you're using um, uh, one of these steel roll dies, just one of these um, regular dies, you're gonna go ahead and put your stuff in there. I lost my, where was the, there we go. Um, you're gonna put the number two plates on here, and the directions are like printed on the sheet, so a little piece of washi tape to help everything stay straight and then kind of give it a nudge to start cranking through. So, sorry for the shakiness. It's on like this big piece of paper which makes it kind of jump all over the place a little. Okay, so there we have our die cut and I'm gonna kind of peel that washi tape off gently so that I don't damage the surface of my image. And then I just pop that right back on top there so that it is ready for um, the next time, so you can keep reusing that washi tape. All right, so now we have this really pretty um, accent point for our card, and we're gonna need a greeting. I'm gonna show you that ribbon. I'm gonna show you a cool way to decorate the inside of this card, and I still have a sneak peek that I promised you for um, the uh, new catalog, or for the new celebration catalog, so. Okay, so um, our greeting, I'm gonna go back to our pack of paper, because I could put a white strip across here, but I honestly feel like um, this paper here, uh, which is also from that Tidings um, paper, it's really pretty. I wasn't super jazzed about this paper um, in the catalog, but I love the way the evergreen and the misty moonlight um, and the cherry cobbler and all these things um, can you guys see those? They're, they're just really pretty. Um, I love the way they come together. So anyway, um, I'm gonna use this piece for our greeting. So we don't have um, that super stark white element on there. Uh, and so I'm gonna bring in Cherry or Mary Merlot here. I thought I grabbed Cherry Cobbler, but it says Mary Merlot. And I'm going to go ahead and stamp her Merry Christmas. So let's go ahead and pop this on here. All right, and then I'm gonna bring back my trimmer and go ahead and trim that element. So um, remember to just look in the center of this line here um, for the cutting track to figure out you know, how much space you want um, on the top of your greeting or whatnot. But that's a really nice way to get nice um, straight cuts and so forth for your greetings. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and trim a banner tail. You could also punch it with one of the banner punches. Um, on there and that's gonna go across here like this. You can kind of see like the composition of our layout, right? Three by four, focal point, greeting strip. I'm gonna put one more strip across the center and I feel like um, now is the time to show you this ribbon. Okay, I hope that it shows as beautifully in the video as it does in person, but it is this gorgeous gold and cherry cobbler um, ribbon. It will be in the catalog that begins on August 3rd. Um, demonstrators can pre-order now, so if you are um, a demonstrator, you can go ahead and do that. Uh, but the other thing that I like about this ribbon, in addition to the fact that it is two-sided, super sparkly, um, is that it is wide enough that to pop it on my card, all I have to do is put a strip of seal across there and then um, just pop it down there. So really cool, right? Now, if you can't wait till August 3rd and you're desperate to make this card, there are other ribbons um, in the regular catalog that would definitely work. Um, we're gonna bring this in here. And, oh, you're such a sweetheart, Deborah. Thank you. I'm so glad that you're learning stuff. 
I honestly, I probably learn as much as you guys just from like talking about things. So I'm gonna pop this on here. And if you're wondering why I haven't put my flower on yet, it's because I have another, I feel like it needs something else, right? It's Christmas cards. So I decided to grab uh, this um, super shimmer paper, which actually I used on a sneak peek card that I showed yesterday. Um, and I uh, haven't put it away yet. So it was out and I love it. It's actually called Pearl. Pearlescent specialty paper um, and it comes to 12 by 12 sheets to a package but you don't need much to have a great impact so I'm going to show you two examples of that one is this fabulous die so the poinsettia dies are um, if you don't already have them I know a lot of people do because they were so popular um, they uh, have lots and lots of cool pieces in them lots of possibilities and one of the great um, elements in there is this little berry um, element. And so I'm gonna go ahead and cut this twice from my pearlescent. Can you guys see how that cool that pearl is? I'm not sure it shows very well. Um, from this pearl paper and so through the magic of television, I have these two elements to add to our card. And I'm gonna tuck them under here like this. And one of the things that I love about Stampin' Up! stamps um, and die sets is that they are sets. So when you get them, you don't get like just this poinsettia image. You get this poinsettia image plus the leaves and the berries and the greetings in a font that matches. Like it's a really, really great to have everything all together is a coordinating set. It really helps um, projects come together and look great in the end. So, um, that's what, there's my little like, woohoo, yay, stamping up. Um, all right, here we have our placement. I'm gonna hold those two. I'm gonna take this out of the way and I'm gonna bring in my Stampin' Dimensionals and I'm gonna use the Stampin' Dimensionals to pop those down. Yes, I could put um, multi-purpose liquid glue on the back, but honestly, this is so easy. And I love the way they like have a little spring to them. Um, so they kind of pop up and have that little extra element and sorry about that. Um, I always have trouble figuring out which direction is up on here. And the answer is to look at the, um, little berries. They have shadows at the bottom. So that's going to help me know which way is up on our, um, poinsettia. So if you're looking at it, you're like, eh, I don't know why it doesn't, I don't know why it looks like it's right one direction or the other. Look for the shadows on the stamp. Okay, so there's the front of our card. The inside of this card is honestly just as exciting to me. So um, let me show you why. We're gonna bring this back in. We're gonna bring in another tiny strip of the pearl paper and I still have that celebration sneak peek card to show you. So uh, I'm gonna bring this in and I'm gonna bring in the berry stamp that matches sort of that element that we added there. And so, which way am I going? There we go. So um, I'm gonna grab my cherry cobbler. Oh no, Mary Merlot ink pad and I am going to um, pop some berries down here at the bottom of our card. Let's see, there's a couple. And I'm gonna vary the angle and location just a little bit um, so that it doesn't look like, um, you know, it's just doo doo doo, right? Like if I'd gone across there and gone one, two, three, then it would look like a little mini forest of weird berry bushes. So by turning my stamp and varying the height of it, um, I can skip the, the like line of soldier trees and put on like sort of an artistic set of trees. So um, there's another tip for you. Now, this paper, um, I'm gonna bring back and use on the inside of our card. So a lot of times I like to do like a strip of DSP at the bottom, um, especially for something like this where you have you know, a great package of coordinating papers, um, but then it covers up our berries. So instead, I'm going to do a partial strip like this. Now you want it to look intentional, so I'm actually gonna cut um, a little um, banner end, and this is going to echo that design element from the front of our card. So I think, I don't know, I guess on my other sample, I did it the other direction, but maybe I kind of like this. Uh, and then I'm gonna bring in a piece of that shimmer paper and put it on top. I think I'm gonna do this one this way. So this is just a little too long. You could cut it your trim with your trimmer to be safest. Um, but hey, we're living dangerously here. And so, uh, I always forget to turn my wrist and forward that when I'm doing little tiny bits. Okay, so there's our element there. And then I'm just gonna cut um, 
an end on there. And this I'm gonna put on with a teeny bit of the um, liquid glue. And I hear like major furniture moving upstairs. So my, um, I can hear uh, the rabbit who lives upstairs and I think she's remodeling her cage. I'm not sure what she's doing, but I'm gonna have to go check. Uh, it's not good when I can hear her furniture moving. So, all right. So there we have our um, elements, but we need a greeting. And this stamp set has terrific greetings um, with lots of um, good variety. So there's a thank you if you need Christmas thank yous. There's a just plain happy holidays, warm wishes um, from our home to yours. But I really love this one. May the magic and wonder, uh, may the magic and wonder, may magic and wonder bloom this holiday. Whew, I'll get it out. And so I'm going to pop this on here. It's perfect, right? Because we have our poinsettias. And I'm gonna put it over here on the side. Um, so that kind of leaves all the space for writing. So a little bit different layout um, for the inside of a card than we're used to seeing. I'm gonna close my Mary Marlowe pad before it ink travels. And I'm going to pop, there we go, remember to roll my wrist, um, and pop this inside. Okay, so you wanna see the other version of the inside that I did. Um, I did kind of the same layout, but instead of using Oh, and we smushed from the back side. Ooh, I feel like we need little berries here too. So there, I added some subtle berries here at the back where I'd sign my card. Um, okay, so the other inside of the card looks like this. So you can kind of choose which of the DSPs you guys like. Uh, I kind of like this one with the, um, what is that color? Is it gray granite? Oops, throwing paper on the floor. It is, um, oh, Sahara sand, yeah. Uh, remember to um, always look at the back of your designer series paper packages for the uh, colors that are included. So I kind of like the Sahara sand version. I don't know. Lots of good choices. So anyway, um, that's our sneak peek ribbon. And you guys ready for the card? Drum roll. Drum roll. Um, so one of the things that's coming in the celebration mini catalog that begins on August 3rd is a sheep stamp set. And it is darling. And there is going to be um, a designer series paper uh, that is hand penned, the hand pen paper, um, which is this one here, except a black and white version of it. And I am so excited. If you guys um, know me, I love black and white paper. So here is the same card in a sneak peek version. So this one uses that little sheep. I got some um, shimmery crystal effects on there. You can see it's honestly the same layout with the greeting um, at the top as a little strip, a ribbon across the center, and then that three by four piece of designer series paper trimmed um, at the two third points. What do you guys think? Are you super excited? Oh, so I, I said there were three celebration things on here. One is the hand pen paper, one is the sheep stamp set, and the other is the sheep dies. So they are a celebration item too. And if you don't know celebration, oh, you are in for a treat. Um, for every $50 you order, you get a free item from a special celebration mini catalog. This one. Um, so if you are one of my customers, you're gonna be getting those very soon. Um, I am packing them as we speak. Well, not right now, but as you're watching maybe, um, if you're watching later. Uh, and so some fun things to look forward to in that. And Celebration is gonna run in August and September. Um, if you cannot wait until August 3rd to get these fabulous new things like this ribbon and other um, assorted goodies, um, you can sign up and be part of my Loven Stampfuls uh, demonstrator family now, and you can get uh, the Celebration, um, or not the Celebration, you can get the new catalog things in your starter kit. So ask me for information about that if you just can't wait. Otherwise, um, if you want to start your wish list when your catalog comes, there's going to be a new demonstrator special that runs for August and September, August 3rd through September, um, where you get a free bundle of your choice. So uh, when you order your starter kit, so a bundle from here, which is a stamps and die bundle, or a bundle from here, which you guys haven't even seen yet. Um, so it's a really good deal, like a $60, you can get $60 bundle for free. So, uh, keep that in mind and start thinking about your wish list. So, all right, guys, um, that is my uh, video for this morning. So I will be back on Friday with another tutorial. Sorry, I'm trying to hold this. I think it's making it shakier. Eek. Sorry. 
Okay, um, I'll be back on Friday with another project for you. Uh, it won't be a Christmas project, but it will be a project that makes the most of this um, DSP sale. Uh, so you're going to want to check that one out. And then um, I will not be here on Monday. So Monday is going to be vacation day, but I'll be back next week on Wednesday and Friday. So um, you could take the opportunity to go back and watch some past episodes that you might have missed because we're at like, what, 164 now? Whoosh. So that's a lot of projects. Uh, anyway, thank you guys for stamping with me this morning and I will talk to you soon. See you on Friday.